Konya King, yeah. Konya King, yeah, yeah, yeah. Konya King. Konya, yeah. It's the Konya King. Konya in the culture. VSOP got the henny in the back, he's smoking. Ain't no time for games, cause I'm on the rise. Hunter standing in the streets, I'm fucking certified. Konya King, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up, everyone? I'm your host, the Black Konya King. Welcome to Konya King Culture. On today's episode, we got a special guest. We got Mel Ward, business manager from East Clothing Line. We gonna do on this cognac battle. We got Davindor VSOP, Prince Polyak XO, and Claude Chatelier XO. But before we jump in and all of that, y'all already know. First, take a shot with me. So first, I'm gonna let our guests pick which one we gonna start with. Which one you wanna start with? It's gonna be the first one we rate. Gonna start with Claude. Okay, how you say that? Claude Chatelier. Chatelier. Sound like some shit from uh, Rick Ross albums. <laughs> right, so we got this Claude Chatelier, EXO. As y'all know, EXO has been aged at least six years. So, what we typically do when we rate these, we're gonna first smell them, see if we can smell the notes in it. Like, so basically, that's just telling me what you smell. Smell these. Okay. So when we smell, when you smell, what do you smell? It's gonna be on the sweeter side. It's gonna be on the heavy on the molasses in it. When I smell it, I feel like on your scale, it's gonna be like a two. It's gonna be like a two? Mmm. Yeah. Yeah, when I smell it, I think I smell like some orange, maybe like some citrus or something like that. Alright, let's do it. What you think? That citrus definitely started off on the top. So if you rate it on the mellow meter, how would you rate that? Red. You got it. Put some hair on your chest, slight burn, and smooth like water. Smooth like water. Smooth like water. I'm going to say I got to agree. I think I, I think this one's smooth like water. All right. Let's do this next one. What's the next one you want to do? Prince Polyak. Yeah. Prince Polyak XO. All right, so this is another XO. As you know, aged at least six years. Let's see what this hitting on. Mm. I don't 
don't want to smell too much of anything. What you smell? I mean, it smells strong. It don't. That's gonna put some hair in the chest. That's what it smells like. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, the reason why I put a BSOP up here against the XO is because I had a lot of people ask me what's the difference between BSOP and XOs. So, even though it's the year's age, a lot of people think that it's just a marketing tactic. So, I said, let me put this up here, get some XOs, see if the XOs is better or not than the BSOP. But some BSOPs uh, and the BSs and the XOs, all that, but it depends on the brand. Like, so, mm -hmm. like, most of us, we drink Hennessy BS mm -hmm. and we drink Remy BSOP at the same price point. But to get Hennessy's BSOP is the privilege. Right. If you put that up against Remy's BSOP, and it's yeah, it makes it it makes 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 how would you rate them as far as, you know, your smoothest to, uh, you know, rate them like that? Your smoothest brain. Like Claw one. Dabba Dome. Dabba Dome two. And my man right here. I'm going to say I got to agree. In that order. One. Two, three. So, y'all let me know what y'all think, but this is an example right here of a BSOP that's smoother than an XO, in our opinion. So, let me know what y'all think. So, we got uh, both of our top rated cognac. Out of the three, which is this Claude Chatelet or Chatelet, if you know how it's pronounced, drop it in the comments so we can say it correctly. All right, but before we jump into all that, I'm gonna ask you, which I ask everybody, what's your wildest, craziest uh, story involving alcohol? You're <laughs> talking to somebody who had thousands of drunk nights. Um, He's a professional drinker, y'all. Professional drinker. I used to be a bartender, so that's a little more. Um, okay. I know. One of my cleanest, funniest nights, or whatever. Last night off the liquor. When I turned 25, I took. I woke up that morning and I had hashtag 25 would die on Instagram. Like, <laughs> I'm gonna take 25 shots. Oh, I'm a dad trying, so. <laughs> I woke up, I took a few shots before I got to work. Mind you, I was an AM bartender, so I took a few shots before 10 AM. I got off work at three. I went to the neighborhood bar, and I started taking shots there, and my friends had to tie them up to my other. Mm -hmm. So I started doing that. Then we was like, all right, let's take it to U Street. Went down mm -hmm. U Street. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many bars we hit down E Street, but I know for the last eight shots, we had four shots lined up. I had a shotgun all of them, like boom, 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 boom. That was four, boom, 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 boom. Now we had 25. After that 25th shot, I don't shit. I, uh, you made 25 I, shots? Hey, my cousin, he had to turn me in the house, and he was gonna drop me off in the house, drop me off. Woo! Yeah, but yeah, I don't know, man. who paid the bill either, but. Oh, man. We survived. We got a toast to that. 25 shots. 25. I think my record is 15. I don't think I never went for 25. Mm. Alright, so. 15. 15, and that was just because I swear it's only maybe it's 30 shots in the bottle. You a bartender, you tell me. So like 18 in the bottle. So we wasn't even pouring four shots. We thought we was at 15. I was in a little competition. And I remember getting up to 15. I don't remember where it ended up at. When I keep fucking around with you, I'll be at 25. So. <laughs> yeah, keep moving. Hey man, you know, just.
just so y'all know, future guests, you come on this show, we really drink. This shit ain't gonna happen. This is real liquor. So you come on here, you gonna be lit. You know what I'm saying? But tell the people a little bit about yourself, you know? Let them know a little bit about you, who you are, what, what it is you do. Um, very simple and, and basic. Um, I'm the business manager of Eat the Brand, Eat Clothing. Elevate all the time. If you don't eat, you down the street. Um, we're entering our fifth year of business, so I've been working for myself the last five years. I'm a coach and mentor to a lot of youth throughout DC. And that's it. I don't really talk about myself too much. I just I just believe in doing the work and making shit happen. Okay, so we're gonna talk about we're gonna talk about the E brand. You know what I'm saying? So, why, why did, why, what made you start the heat brand? The heat clothing brand? I didn't start it. My brother started it. Um, my brother started it. Um, he came up with the whole elevate all the time. You don't eat you down the street. But that was part of like a photography brand. My brother was going around the city taking photographs. Uh, he ended up in Broccoli City. You talking about the Broccoli yeah. Festival? Yeah, Broccoli Brock City Festival. Mm -hmm. um, he was taking pictures there, and his photos went viral. It was like a Will Smith and Erica Badu. Um, talking about the one that was down there at St. East? Yeah, over there in St. East. I was down there. I remember exactly what you were talking about. What year was that? 2015, 16. Something like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. So all those photos, they went viral, and he didn't get no credit for them. They was on everybody's blog, all that shit. So mm -hmm. they didn't, he didn't get no credit. So. He was like, oh, he need a watermark. So a dude we grew up with made a watermark. That's the logo. That's that. What's the watermark? What's, what's, what's that? It's the Eat logo. He oh, made man. that up and he was like, just throw that on your pictures. So bro put it on his pictures. Mm -hmm. uh, for like the next year, he had the watermark on the pictures. Then he stopped putting them on t-shirts. T-shirts was like, hey, everybody still t-shirts. like, let's mm -hmm. make some money. We took on a life of his own and it was like, oh shit, we on to something. So as he got on to something, um, I was just a big bro in the wings watching. So I'm like, all right, these t-shirts are giant nice. So we, we, eventually I'm like, bro, you need a website. And he was against that idea. So I built a website myself. Mm -hmm. Showed him that we could make money on this. And we did that. I built a website. I was in between jobs. I was in between jobs and I just had like two weeks off. So I would build, I built a website. And as I was starting my last job, we were starting to eat. And I was like, damn, I don't know if I should take this job. Mm -hmm. You know, peer pressure, and I'm like, nah, you need to take that job. In hindsight, I shouldn't have listened, but. Why you say you shouldn't have listened? Cause I missed a lot um, when we started the website. Mm -hmm. Cause we ain't really know how to run the website. And I was trying to run it and do work and coach football, trying to do too many things at once. If I was just sitting there doing that, it would've been good. But I was sitting there doing the website. It's kind of like when people call themselves entrepreneurs. You go work your job 80% of the day, then you get yourself the little last 10% that you got left in the day. So. I wasn't pouring all my energy into my baby. So one of them things where they say with a, a jack of all trades, but a man said none. Nah. You feel it was one of those situations. Yeah, you gotta be careful with that. Mm -hmm. So talking about that, since you you've been doing this for a few years, what advice would you give the future entrepreneurs and people thinking about being entrepreneurs? Man, Nike got the best slogan. They say just do it. Real simple. Just do it. Go do it. Go learn. No, nobody knows. I don't know. I feel like a lot of people that I know, they try to plan out and map out a perfect situation. Ain't nothing perfect. It ain't gonna never be perfect. You you go out and you do what you gotta do. You make mistakes and you do stuff and you you find that perfect moment. Like You find it, you're like, damn, it's tight. Cause you know, you went out there, you bust your ass, you did what you had to do. Ain't ask nobody for nothing. You just, you just doing it. Like, right. It's. Do you feel it's more rewarding than? And I mean, cut you but do you feel it's more rewarding than say when you work a traditional nine to five when you work for somebody else? Do you feel like? Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, yeah, I, I ain't clocked in since, uh, what, since May 2017, I ain't clocked in nowhere. Because a lot of people, and I can tell you even just from myself, just being an entrepreneur, you know, a lot of people, that's their biggest thing. A lot of people only know what they know, you know, which is going, you know, you, you go to school, you do whatever, you go to work, whatever like that. And a lot of times people hear about the failures as a bit small business, but they don't really focus on the success. But so it's like, so what advice would you give somebody who's thinking about jumping into being a small business, on, just being, being an entrepreneur? And I mean, you gotta have a heart. You gotta have a heart to do that. You gotta have the. You gotta be willing to be uncomfortable. If you're not willing to be uncomfortable, it ain't for everybody. But if you're willing to like, like I know on my worst day, I can pay for everything in my life. And if I'm performing at my worst, I can still afford to live and survive. So if I know I can afford to live and survive at my worst, what the hell I'm gonna do at my best? I'm gonna thrive. So that's how I look at it. But it's it's a supreme confidence that I always have supreme confidence in myself. So I, I mean, everybody don't have that. But when I was growing up, all my mentors said, whatever you wanna be, you be the best at that. And you never stop striving to be the best. It might be somebody better than you. Mm -hmm. You ain't gotta hate on that person, but you can always strive to be better at anything. So. That's always been my mindset. And then uh, I would say, well, really, I guess I would say a pretty much the last, but I ask you so, do you regret making the decision going into business yourself as far as instead of you got the traditional path, then you decided to go yourself? Like, do you regret that decision? Because a lot of people, I've heard people, when they decide to go into business for themselves, then they regret it. They be like, I right, nah, I probably should have waited or I probably should have this. So, do you regret that now? Years later, and no regrets. Like I said, October will be five years. Um, mm -hmm. No regrets. Like people always say, time is money. I have a lot of time. Like <laughs> right. I ain't got worried about. I ain't got stressed out about nothing. I make my own schedule. I make my life is what I make it. So if I want to be in the lab all day trying to plan stuff out, I can do that. If I want to go mentor kids and coach kids, with, that's my passion. Mm -hmm. I have time that I can allot to that. If I had this nine to five, I couldn't be as committed to my kids. Do you my know? last job wasn't even nine to five. It was commission based. So that whole commission model is you got 24 hours in a day to go make as much money as you can. So you figure that shit out. That's their mm -hmm. model. Right. Now, do you feel, do you, or not even do you feel, do you find yourself working more being in business for yourself than what you did when you worked a traditional job under somebody? You gotta embrace the work. The work don't stop. Your mind don't stop working. I mean, you can say, oh, I'm off. Your mind don't stop working. I'm like, I wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning like, oh, shit, I forgot to email this person. What did we just talk about? Remember, we just had a conversation where I'm like, look, I mind working in the middle of the night. I might wake up. I've been sitting over here thinking about some stuff the whole entire time. So for me, I'm like, when you been doing this for yourself, that's a 24 hour job. You know, it just, it come as it come. And do you complain about it or nope. you embrace it? I embrace it. I mean, you know what I'm saying? You gotta do, you gotta embrace it. I mean, a lot of people, it's popular, it's cool and common to complain about stuff. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I always tell people I can't complain. I ain't got nothing to complain about. I know where I come from. I know what I used to be. I know what I am now. So mm -hmm. I ain't gonna never complain, right? You ain't gonna never hear me complain. Even if I'm having a bad day, I might vent to somebody. I might cuss a little bit, be frustrated. But at the end of the day, I ain't got nothing to complain about. Man, I hear that. You know what I'm saying? I definitely hear that. So. Quick, quick thing. Um, if anybody want to get any any e clothing, where would they go? Like, what's what's the website info? How would they get in contact with you? Allhomage.com. A l l h o m a g e. dot com. Um, our our website. Yeah, that's our website. Our Instagram is Eat the Brand, and my brother, he's the face of the brand. He's Allhomage on Instagram. 
We're also in select downtown locker room locations and shoe city locations. So we're in about 68 stores nationwide. 68 stores? All right, that's what's up, man. Shout out to that. I will say, you've been talking, you've been babysitting that drink, though. You know what I'm saying? Ask some questions. I got Hey, look, look, look. Hey, y'all, tell me what y'all think. You see this cup, you see this cup. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm retired, but Come. I used to be the turn of God. I mm. created that hashtag on Instagram. <laughs> I hey, you go look at the first. If you look up that hashtag and scroll on. Turn up God. Turn up God. About eight, eight years ago. You know what I'm saying? We gonna see if we got somebody to vouch, vouch for it. Did, did you did you earn that name? Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? We gonna see if we got some vouchers for that name. One of the top people in, in, in your life, they know. Okay, okay, all right. Shit, shit. Okay, we're going to say about that, we're going to say about that, you know, but we're going to end on that note. That's it for today's episode. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and remember, cognac is not a red cup drink. <laughs>